All right, Paul, we saw from the anomaly earlier where Earth is a little bit hotter that it probably is because the water and carbon dioxide is doing these very energetic dances. So is this what's going on with Venus, why it's so off the scale of where it should be? That's right. I mean, Venus has a very thick atmosphere. Yep. Um, why, we'll come back to. And it's almost entirely carbon dioxide. Okay, so... So on Earth, it's mostly nitrogen, which doesn't do much yep. greenhouse stuff. A little bit of water vapor, tiny amounts of carbon dioxide. But Venus's atmosphere is much thicker than the Earth's, and it's almost entirely carbon dioxide. So it, the carbon dioxide wine that's doing this up and down mode, and that up and down mode is what prevents a lot of that infrared radiation leaving. Yes, so that's why Venus is so hot. But how did it get to the stage of having this enormous carbon dioxide atmosphere, and why didn't the Earth have it? Yeah. Now, there is a clue, which it comes from what are called isotope ratios. Okay. Now, we talked about these in the, um, earlier in this course. Yep. Um, but if you think of hydrogen, there are two different isotopes of hydrogen. They're both a nucleus with one electron, yep. and because they've both got one electron, they behave chemically the same. But one of them just has a proton in the middle, and one has just normal hydrogen. Yep. And one of them has an extra neutron, so it's got a proton and a neutron middle, and that's called deuterium. That's right. And that means it weighs twice as much, despite the fact chemically it's identical. So you can have, instead of H2O, you can have D2O, mm -hmm. which is heavy water. That's right. Um, and you can have, I mean, if you were breathing deuterium gas, it would feel like breathing hydrogen gas. I don't recommend either, particularly. <laughs> um, but chemically, they behave exactly the same. Okay. And on all planets, the, what you think is hydrogen is you actually a mixture of hydrogen and deuterium. deuterium. That's right. Same in the sun, same in Jupiter, everywhere. Yep. But you can look, and, and most of it's normal hydrogen, and a very small fraction is deuterium. Okay. But on Venus, that fraction of deuterium is about 100 times higher than it is on the Earth. So it has more of this heavier version of hydrogen. Yes. It doesn't have that much hydrogen to be, at all. Yep. But what there is, is f mass massively overrepresenting the heavy form. Okay. And what we think that means is that originally Venus had a lot more hydrogen. Yep. Because chemical reactions can't get rid of... It would have started off from the same protoplanetary disk as we did, so it started off with the same ratio yep. of hydrogen to deuterium. But somehow it's got rid of most... It must have got rid of a lot of the normal hydrogen. And left with this heavy And deuterium. it can't be a chemical reaction. Yep. It, it has to actually be escaped into space because chemical reactions will affect hydrogen and deuterium equally because they're chemically identical. Okay, so it has to be some sort of Something other that depends mechanism. on the mass. Yep. And escape into space does depend on the mass big time. Yep. Because a lightweight thing can get higher in the atmosphere and get carried away much more by the... Exactly, that's right. ...solar wind. So what we think happened is that once upon a time, Venus looked something like this. So you said Venus was a terrible place, but we actually think Venus was pleasant billions of years ago? Now, we can't see any evidence on this on the surface. As we talked about in the geology section, the surface of Venus has been resurfaced sometime in the last few hundred million years. Yep. And this would have been long before that. Yep. But maybe once upon a time, it, it was a nice, pleasant, tropical, balmy thing with lots of water. The trouble is, as we said, water is a very strong greenhouse gas. That's right. So the water would start evaporating and then start trapping the heat. Yep. And Venus is a bit closer to the sun than us. It has more heat. Yep. As it traps the heat, you're going to... And water vapour does this much better than carbon dioxide. Dust. Yep. It's going to get hotter still. Yep. That means more water is going to evaporate. So it's going to get hotter still. And more water is going to evaporate. So you kind of get this runaway effect. And it's called the runaway greenhouse. All right. <laughs> It has some interesting mental pictures of someone stealing a large glass <laughs> contraption. But it's a runaway greenhouse effect, not, not someone stealing your pot of plants. Right. So, so it's actually not really the carbon dioxide necessarily in this case, but it's the initial water vapour. Quite possibly. What ha happened then is you would have an incredibly dense, much denser than now, very, very hot, hotter than now, hard than it is to imagine, steamy atmosphere. Yep. But what would have happened is a lot of the steam would have got high up and it would have been hit by ultraviolet radiation and solar wind, which would have split some of the hydrogen off the oxygen. Okay. And then the, the normal hydrogen would tend to be blown away. Because it's lighter yep. than the deuterium. Leaving the deuterium behind. The oxygen would then probably combine to form oxide rocks on the surface. Yep. And so over time, you would have lost the water. Yep. And lost the hydrogen to make up the water. The oxygen from that water is probably still there in the form of rocks. Yep. That's heavy enough not to escape. I'm just leaving some deuterium behind, which is why you have 100 times more deuterium relative to the hydrogen that we see on Earth. So, so we think this deuterium is the key that kind of tells us this. That's right. So it's telling us, I think, that a lot of hydrogen, which is probably in the form of broken up water, has been lost. Okay. So almost 
Uh, I wouldn't say certainly, but the standard theory is that it had a lot of water, probably not as much as the Earth does now, maybe enough to have you 100 metre thick oceans rather than several kilometre thick oceans on Earth. Yep. You can estimate how much would have been there originally by looking at the deuterium ratio. Okay. Yep. And it formed a very steamy, hot, tropical greenhouse uh, and then went away. And so leaving just the carbon dioxide behind. That's right. And so this created this initial condition that then ran away to create this very hot, very thick atmosphere planet. That's right. And then the question is, where does the CO2 go? Now on Earth, there's a lot of, a lot of CO2 has been emitted by volcanoes over the Earth's history, yep. and it's not still in the atmosphere. If the, all that CO2 had been emitted by volcanoes in the last four billion years was still yep. in the atmosphere, we would get yep. thicker than Venus's atmosphere. On Earth, what happens is that carbon dioxide is usually absorbed into carbonate rocks okay yep. and then those carbonate rocks are subducted by plate tectonics into the earth and they cool the entire thing down yep but somehow it seems that process is not working on venus okay and it may be because the surface is so hot we don't see any evidence of plate tectonics on venus that's as we right. talked it's about right. earlier yep and so and maybe that's because on earth the way the plate tectonics works is hot lava comes up and then hits the ocean and cools down and that gives the spreading plates but if the surface is so hot on venus maybe that changes how it all works okay. somehow so we still, we're still not exactly perfectly sure about what leads yeah. to this? So it doesn't seem to be the geology cycle on Venus that gets rid of the carbon dioxide. Yeah. There's more carbon dioxide on Earth than there is on Venus, but it's all in the form of you know, limestone. Yes. And long may it stay there. <laughs>